Hello everyone, my name is Sohrab and in this presentation I will be talking about monitoring the strategies at one of the landslides in the Cinebuin River Valley. This site is located in southwestern Manitoba, 50 km north of Verdun. Frequent instabilities along the valley have affected CN Railway and today I'm presenting my work on one of these slides at mile 184.4 CN subdivision. The general soil profile in this region from top to bottom includes fill, glacial till, and then clay shale. Like many other landslides in Western Canada, these instabilities are driven on a pre-sheared clay shales with a residual friction angle of about 8 degrees. Previous studies have so far concluded that the water is the primary factor of instabilities in this region. In summer 2019, on this site, two boreholes were drilled and in each of them, one slope inclinometer and five piezometers were installed. In addition to this, 24 survey pins were laid out. One of the Dr. Hendry's grad students at the time performed X-ray scans on the samples and he was successful to identify the depth of shear band along with its geometrical characteristics. Two SIs had been installed in the 90s near to our site. The goal was to record and report the displacements of another slide shown with black oval. And this neighboring slide has been periodically moving and apparently has been recently activated again as per information provided by CN. Using SI readings, we were able to confirm the depth of shear zone and calculate the average displacement rates, which were found to be almost 12 and 15 mm per year. Based on the difference in depth of dominant movements in boreholes, we understood that the shear zone is running subparallel to the ground. Also, SI readings show almost a uniform movement above the main shear zone. By comparing photos taken in 2019 and 2021, it is seen that the inclination of already tilted objects, such as posts, are maintained constant. Figure 8 shows a distribution of piezometers on a cross section of this slide. The recorded values by piezometers show a hydrostatic distribution of pore pressure, which shows that the slide is not under the influence of a pressurized layer. However, the variation of pressure head over time in borehole 1 and 2 does not follow a similar pattern, probably as a result of different geological units, which leads to a rather complicated hydrogeology regime in the region. As an attempt to understand the generation of poor water pressure, we gathered the precipitation data from a nearby weather station 30 km south of our site. Different attempts to correlate these data with pressure heads at the site remained unsuccessful. All these highlight the necessity of having poor water pressure and meteorological data with higher temporal resolution and also recorded at the site. Two other students and I had a reconnaissance in October 2021, comparing photos taken of the slide's head with the one taken in April 2015 shows that it has, it has dipped as much as a meter and a half. The deformations can be all easily noticed by subsidence in the traversing track as shown in figure C. Figure F also features the head scarp of the nearby slide as well as the subsidence in the track. We were also able to find the toe bulge that marks the outermost downslope extent of this slide. In this trip, the coordinates of survey pins were also collected using a GPS device. It was found that the most of these pins have not moved very much, but apparently ground has been moving upslope the track near the head scarp, suggesting that it is the most active part of landslide. An initial SAR analysis is also performed for this site. Unfortunately, since one geometry was available only, uh, only line of sight displacements were obtained. It shows that most of points are moving at a very slow rate, as also suggested by SI readings. But on the other hand, upslope the track is apparently moving at faster rates, which was also shown in displacements of pins. But more interestingly, results indicate that the hill in front of the nearby slide is moving also at a higher rate 
implying a reactivation of this neighboring slide. After the provincial and university restrictions because of COVID-19 were lifted, I immediately began to work on preparing geocubes to be installed on this site. We upgraded the system to be capable of retrieving data remotely by radio communication through a cellular network. Also, the arrangements regarding the mechanical fixation of geocubes cubes and solar panels were made, which needed purchasing several foundation screw piles. An instrumentation layout has been also prepared and the line of sight between the mobile and fixed geo cubes have been checked using the antenna mod module of MATLAB to make sure it's feasible to monitor the site by this method. As soon as the weather condition becomes proper for field work, we will install these units in the site. In the next year, we aim to install all mentioned instruments to gather data with highest frequency possible, whether it's precipitation, poor water pressure, or ground movements. Also, lab experiments on the previously taken samples, as well as 2D and 3D numerical modeling will help us to thoroughly understand the mechanism and kinematics of these landslides. And I believe that would conclude my presentation. These are the references I use for this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have.